recording. All right. So um, I'm going to have us go around the room. And as we go around, uh, introduce your partner a little bit about them, and then uh, describe you know, the conflict or situation that that partner uh, shared with you. So why don't we go ahead and start with this partnership up here at the front. So um, we'll have one person introduce, other person introduce, and we'll move on to the next one. We're in a three-way. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is um, Jonah. He had a disagreement with his football coach, and it was just like a regular conversation. And afterwards, he was like more understanding of what his coach wanted him to do. Okay. Um, and then this is Shane. Uh, Shane doesn't really like conflict, he tends to walk away from them, but recently he's been having a conflict with his neighbor and he's parking on the street and his neighbor doesn't really like that and so he feels kind of annoyed about it. Gotcha. Uh, this is Angelique. This is her first Angeline. 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 Okay. Uh, she sometimes gets into some confrontations with her boyfriend, mm -hmm. but it's always involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things I'm noticing so far that's really interesting is the ways y'all are describing it in terms of, you know, a disagreement, a conversation, um, you know, that type of thing. And I think there's a lot of ways that we, you know, characterize and frame conflict that are an important element of how we think about conflict management. Thank you all for starting us off. So, um, do we have a partnership over here? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, this is Don. Um, she had a recent disagreement with her boyfriend about how old her puppy was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in the end, she still couldn't figure it out. So, gotcha. I don't know, they left. It wasn't resolved. Sure. And this is Chad. And he um, had a roommate. I think, I don't know how many he had, but he had some roommates. And one of his roommates ended up eating his last bowl of cereal, uh, Cheerios, and uh, he was very upset. He ended up getting a free box of Cheerios at the end of it, but he was so unhappy. Uh, <laughs> see? And, you know, conflict and that type of thing can be really silly, too. Um, my partner and I have this ongoing conflict where we have a two-year-old dog, and I think she's still a puppy because I think dogs can always be puppies, at least in some way. She's like, no, it's a dog. Uh, so, you know, it can be silly, but it can reveal interesting ways that you and another person communicate and talk about things you disagree with, even if it's really silly. So, it's very interesting. Do we have a partnership over here? No? Um, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, this is Jamie. Um, she had an argument with her sister. She was, like, you know, kind of in that freaking phase. So, uh -huh. you know, that goes. But at the end, there were no hard feelings. This is Stormy, pretty similar situation. Uh, she had a disagreement or some just kind of bickering with her mom, but it's like the same kind of situation like a family, like mm -hmm. you completely carry over. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, this is Grace. Uh, the argument she had talked to me about was a Thanksgiving with the family was over politics. Mm -hmm. um, very polar opinions and ideas. Sure. Um, if there wasn't yelling, it was just kind of like frustrated and stern conversation, mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately she just walked away feeling annoyed. Gotcha. Um, this is Ellie, and she had conflict with her teammates. Um, she said it was like a long day, so I'm probably just like annoyed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there was yelling, lots of emotions, and then afterwards she said she felt like trash because nothing was really resolved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a couple things that I'm noticing, right, is first of all, people who come away from a conflict with really different feelings. Some people feel like, okay, we figured it out. Other people do have those longer term, like, not only frustration, but also feeling like devalued as a person, right? That's, that's challenging stuff. And also the ways that things like age, you know, preteen, older adult, parent, definitely play a really huge role in how conflict happens too. So, um, you know, things we're already starting to notice in patterns in terms of how people are talking about that. So on the second row, do we have a partnership here? Or are you all, how did we all arrange that? So, okay, yeah, we'll have this, this cluster go next. So, yeah, I can go first. Okay. Um, I'm Jeremy, I'm a 
was this is Calvin. He had an argument last year with his roommate. They weren't really cleaning up their stuff and their dishes and everything. And he was very annoyed. But in the end, they came to get through it and it got resolved. Gotcha. Yeah. This is Joe. And uh, his argument was uh, with a couple of his friends. They are talking about sports and uh, I mean, you know, like the, the just fun stuff. I mean, not so consequential, but uh, they, they saw the difference and got over it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's fun to see, like, heated arguments about teams, right? Um, you know, like U of O versus Oregon State, right? And just, there's a lot that, a lot of passion that comes out of that, too, uh, that's really interesting to see, especially among folks who might be really good friends, but die-hard supporters of different teams, right? So, is that, do you all, were you all a partnership back here, or group of three back here? Okay. So this is Ambrosia, and she had a conflict with her co-worker, uh -huh. and they weren't really seeing eye to eye on something, and it's not really resolved yet, so it's kind of awkward. Yeah. And we're not working. Um, okay. So she had a conflict with her roommate, and it got to like, yelling at each other and stuff, so they kind of just walked away from it, and then the next day, Sure. One of the big challenges of like conflict in context, right, is that what's considered the appropriate way to communicate or engage with each other is going to look really different. Like at the workplace, you know, there's there's decorum, there's rules about you know how casual you can be with another person, right? Passive aggression comes up a lot, you know, um, in terms of things like a roommate too, right? There's all of these tight ropes to walk in terms of what's considered okay um, in how to talk about and deal with conflict, for sure. Um, we've got a group around the middle here. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Uh, this is Clayton. Uh, his situation is a debate class. They're discussing politics. Mm. Um, during, it's like, a little aggravating when you're not quite able to understand their point of view and where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Your point of view is completely different. But at the end, it feels good to be able to get your like point across and that your understanding across to them. Mm -hmm. This was Ryan. Um, he had an argument with his dad about fantasy football. Ah. And he felt annoyed because he knows that he well, he knows more than his father does. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you know. Not only again those examples of things like sports and so on, you know, having some pretty heated. Uh, disagreements, but also, you know, just trying to um, figure out where the other person is coming from. Why do they feel so passionately about uh, whatever issue? When you unpack that, you learn a lot more about that person. Uh, you know, why are you so into this team? Oh, every one of your siblings went to college or U of O or whatever. Right? Um, let's see. We'll keep going down the line. Our next uh, this is Sarah. Her conflict was she's working retail and somebody tried to like return something. And she had to explain to them that like they couldn't return it for like a different item. Mm -hmm. And then it got mad and like stormed off and left her stuff. And so it left her like super confused because she never came back. Wow. And then this is Raina. She had a conversation with the patient where she was trying to be positive and be like, hey, see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, just being positive, but he was being like super negative. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, this, again, context. Right, like working in retail or customer service, there's a lot of challenging interactions. You know, a lot of like, can I speak to the manager? Types of things happening, and you know, in terms of things like see a patient, you know, healthcare, and, and so many other topics too. It's like, you know, that relationship. I think people go in with different expectations, and um, it's challenging when you're occupying a role where the, the things that somebody wants in the context of the conflict are not things you can provide. Right. Um, so you know, there's a lot of tension in those situations too. We've got maybe another group or two out here at the end. Yep. All right. Slogan. He had a conflict with a Walmart employee who was tripping him out, and it didn't get resolved. He just had to fix it. He still seen the situation. He felt good enough. Good. Good. Abby. She had an incident in the airport. She was trying to get a drink or beverage. So her mask was down and someone was yelling at her, put her mask up while she was in the middle of drinking something. But she just kind of let it be and sure. walked away. Sure. 
you know, a lot of, at times, challenging and awkward conversations surrounding, you know, masks and COVID-19 for sure. And, you know, um, how many of you are familiar with or have heard of the idea of fundamental attribution error? Be folks in sociology or psych. Right? It's the idea that uh, a lot of times we tend to attribute um, if somebody is in a bad mood, right, or it's not feeling good, and they're abrupt or short with you, or they're sad or angry or whatever, we tend to think that it's personal and it's on us rather than the person maybe having a bad day or not doing well, so on, right? Um, not to say that it's okay to take it out on somebody else, but just to say that, you know, a lot of times we as humans are pretty wired to take on, you know, a lot of these issues personally. So thank you all so much for taking the time to introduce yourselves to the group. Um, I will do my best with names. Um, you know, it might be a couple, two or three weeks to, for me to really get them down, but I do want to make sure that I'm, you know, getting your names, and it's, it's good to learn a bit more about you and also for you all to share those uh, experiences about dealing with conflict, whether it's as silly as the dog's age to something really serious, you know, like challenges at work, uh, customer service, and so on. Um, we deal with conflict a lot, and in addition to those themes that I mentioned, um, one common thread is that people oftentimes don't like conflict. You know, you feel really tense, you have this kind of seizing up, this fight or flight response, um, you oftentimes are worried about the relationship. If you get into a really heated disagreement, um, especially over political or social issues, right, you don't want to damage the relationship, um, but you also want to get your point across. Like, there's just so many um, issues that we encounter with conflict. And so I hope that this course kind of functions as a, not only a way to build writing skills, but also a sort of practical application how we can better manage and deal with the conflicts that we encounter. So thank you all for those introductions. I want to tell you just a couple things about myself. Um, so I'm an assistant professor here at Eastern Oregon University. This is actually my first year here, and in fact, my first day teaching um, on campus. So I'm really excited to be here. I was born and raised on the western side of Oregon. So I live in the Westland Lake Oswego area just south of Portland. Um, went to college at Lewis and Clark. For the longest time, I thought I was going to be a high school English teacher, but I fell in love with competitive speech and debate uh, in high school and college and really enjoyed doing that and really found communication exciting because it was a chance to advocate for issues that I felt really passionate about and cared about. You know, it was really useful to help develop those skills and learn. And so I moved to Stockton, California where I completed a master's in communication. And then um, I lived in Salt Lake City, Utah, where I wrapped up with my PhD program. And um, I've always wanted to go back to Oregon, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm not as familiar with the eastern part of the state, but I you know, visited and fell in love with uh, Morgan Lake and all of the really great surrounding outdoor things to do. Um, so I'm just really glad to be here and uh, really excited to be working with all of you. So I feel like depending on the faculty member or folks that you're working with, especially if you're getting into your second or third year, you're probably thinking to yourself, you know, who am I going to work with in other courses? Um, who am I going to work with on a capstone, a collaborative project, a presentation, and so on? Um, so I like to share a little bit about where I come from in terms of other courses and areas that I like to focus on. So I'm really interested in rhetoric, right? How we use things like persuasion, uh, to influence and convince one another about things. I especially like to look at this in terms of um, disability activism, how folks with disabilities particularly use things like social media, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on to advocate for their needs and to engage in this kind of new environment, especially over the last year and a half, right? As I mentioned, I do competitive speech and debate too. This was the speech and debate team. Uh, at the University of Utah that I worked with for four years. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping that we'll eventually have a program or something like that at EOU too. So, um, it's definitely a big part of what I'm really passionate about. So, um, my free time. Uh, this is my two-year-old dog slash puppy, Sylvie. She's Sylvie the Silver Labrador Retriever. Um, high energy, loves to go out and play, um, loves to go in the water. Um, this is total prototype, no graphics yet, blah, 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 but I also 
I'm an independent video game designer. It's a just kind of fun hobby I like to do on the side. It has nothing to do with anything else, but um, I grew up playing video games a lot as a kid. I really enjoy it. Um, and um, that's a little bit about what I do. Again, I love to hike and do outdoor things. I am really excited to get to know the area around the Grand better um, and be back here in Oregon. So, you know, I've alluded to this a lot already, but one of the questions that I think that comes up a lot is whether or not conflict is inherently a bad thing, right? And as I've sort of suggested already, you know, conflict can be useful. It can be a way for us to get to know each other better, to empathize better, and so on. So conflict is not necessarily a bad thing, right? Conflict can not only let us empathize with other people, but it helps us, you know, to get into the perspective of somebody else. How many of you have ever felt kind of like bottled up? Like you have this frustration or thing that you want to share with somebody else, but you just chose not to share it. A lot of you, right? It's a common feeling, and to some extent, that's okay. We make strategic decisions about when and how we choose to engage in conflict. But in the right context, in the right space, it can help us to walk away feeling better. If we're not feeling great about how we manage and deal with conflict, well, hopefully this class will help to get some pointers on how to do that. So the other thing that I want to highlight is a kind of introduction to what we'll be getting into in this class is the difference between conflict management and conflict resolution. Does anybody want to take a stab at what they feel like this difference is? Yeah? Uh, conflict management is like just dealing with whatever comes in conflict resolution is like finding a way to fix whatever they're Yeah, I really like the way you're characterizing like dealing with it versus ending it, right? So resolution, you can think about the resolution as the conclusion or endpoint. So conflict management is how we engage in conflict. We recognize it's not necessarily a bad thing. How do we do it, right? How do we talk to each other? How do we create a respectful boundary? How do we use things like sympathy and empathy to understand each other, uh, and so on? So it's creating an effective conflict space. One of the things that we'll be doing in this class is a study circle, where we'll have somebody who serves as a facilitator toward a conversation about a topic that you might have disagreement on. So being a facilitator means allowing people to openly share and express their views while steering the conversation in you know, a respectful and supportive way. Conflict resolution is something that a lot of us feel really interested in doing, right? Because instinctually, fight or flight, we want to shut it down. We see conflict as a threat, to our relationship, to our physical, mental, and emotional well-being, and we say, nope, no more. And there's a lot of ways we might do that. We might walk out of the room, we might shut down the conversation, we might change the topic, uh, and so on. So conflict resolution is especially popular in places like the United States, right? It's a culturally common practice for us to avoid conflict when we can. So conflict management is about building the skills to deal with conflict rather than building the skills to end a conflict. And I want us to try to resist the urge to end a conflict every single time. So the next thing that I want to go over are some of the course policies, including the syllabus and schedule. How many of you have been able to access this course through Canvas or have given anything to look on Canvas? Several of you. Awesome. You haven't? That's totally OK. I know that I have bombarded you with announcements before the week has started, but I did want to help folks who were interested in a sneak peek to get a look at the class. So I'm going to go over a couple major course policies and things uh, to talk about and um, give you a sense of what to expect in the weeks ahead. Again, I know that some of you, you might have already seen this, and this is mostly review, but there's a couple things that I want to contextualize. So uh, we meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This email is the best way to get in touch with me. Um, you can also use Canvas notifications, uh, Canvas messaging. That's totally fine, too. Um, I have an office phone, but it's kind of a weird one that doesn't have text or anything like that. So email is easier. Um, so as far as office hours, I'm sure you've gotten some varied policies from different professors about how they handle office hours. So I kind of take a dual approach. In other words, I, from 10 to noon, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I will be in my office, and I'll be available to meet with anybody who would like to 
talk about the course, talk about their grade, if they have a question or idea or thought or anything that they'd like to share or chat about, I'll be there. At the same time, I'm also hosting a Zoom room that you can access through Canvas. So from 10 to noon, if you're not on campus yet or you know not able to access my office up in uh, second floor of Ackerman, that's totally okay. You can just join me through Zoom. And if that time doesn't work, like you've got other classes or things going on, just contact me with two to three times that you'd like to meet, um, and we'll find a time outside of that that works for you. So if you can't meet with me during these slots every week, totally okay. I'll find another time to meet with you. So I also will try to respond to emails as quickly as I can um, in order to address any questions and so on that you have. I won't be going over in super detail a lot of these policies. So COVID-19, right, um, Eastern Oregon University, State of Oregon requires folks to wear a mask. I know it's not necessarily fun or exciting, right? Um, I have to do it too. And um, I can't speak for whether or how things will change in the months ahead. If there's anything that I've learned uh, from the past year and a half, it's that life happens while you're making plans. So, um, you know, that is the policy as it is currently. Um, I don't like calling people out, you know, if something slips or you have to take a drink of water or something, that's okay as long as you're respectful um, and, you know, to the extent that you can, careful about things. So um, here are some policies here. Again, this fulfills these writing requirements. So there's a lot of writing in this class. A lot of folks are trying to get their gen eds in, um, and this is a way to do that for writing. Uh, disability statements, so if you need accommodations, happy to work with you on those. Just make sure you're working in with the office. Uh, this just lets us know that you know we're dealing with conflict and we'll have discussions but just to maintain a respectful and supportive environment again i get into that a little bit more there uh, respecting the diverse perspectives and experiences that you all are coming from um, please don't plagiarize or use material in this class or other classes without getting in touch with me here's um, just some information about dropping the course that you can access through the syllabus um, I've gone over some of the ways to get in touch with me. Um, here's where you go if you're not sure, if you don't feel confident about your grade in the class and not comfortable with my response. Um, you can use, if you have tech like a phone, laptop, tablet, and so on, you're welcome to use that to take notes or access the reading, uh, but please don't use that to you know, check social media and so on. We only meet for 50 minutes, so be able to easily get back to that. Additionally, um, going back up for a minute, You'll notice that the textbook requirement for this course is the JANT Conflict and Communication. So this is the same book that's been used in years past. So if you know any other students who have taken this course, then you'll probably be able to get the textbook from them. Um, but the easiest way to get in touch with the textbook is to rent the Amazon ebook. Um, you can also get a used copy or an older edition. The older edition is generally going to be okay. Um, but I want you to do whatever is the most economical and works the best for you. You'll need that textbook starting the second week of class. Um, what I like to do is provide a free PDF of the first chapter. That way, while you're waiting for it to ship or you're waiting to get access to it, you'll still be able to do the readings for this week. But just make sure that by next Monday that you're able to secure that copy of the book. And if you have any issues with accessing the textbook or um, you, know, you need some help, please let me know. I'd much rather have you get in touch with me and say, hey, I can't get the reading, my book hasn't arrived yet, um, and then I can help you out. So um, please come to class on time. Again, we only meet for 50 minutes. If something comes up, that's okay, but you know, try to avoid um, coming in late or leaving super early. Um, what I will tell you is in general, um, I take a couple different approaches the class, um, the victor approach and the fighter fighter approach. So the victor approach means that you should think of yourself as a victor. If things come up in the course, uh, maybe you're behind on other assignments, you've got like three midterms in the same week, you know, you've just got all sorts of things going on, right? Um, let me know. Um, the best way you can do that is to say, look, I'm swamped, I'm overwhelmed, can I turn this essay in on October 25th, right? Come in with a plan um, and a strategy to tell me what you need and how I can support you, right? Rather than, ah, I'm falling behind, what do I do, right? 
here is a proposal of what to do, and I'm happy to work with you on that. The other approach I take is the firefighter approach, right? So you got a fire in your house, you get a fire extinguisher, you call 911, you get the fire out, right? You don't wait for the fire to burn down the house, you have a bunch of ashes, and then you say, hey, help, there was a fire, right? The same way, if you're struggling, falling behind in the course, or you need some additional support, let me know, and I will help you put the fire out. Please don't be afraid to get in contact with me, especially since, again, we've had a challenging year and a half. We're all adjusting to a very new environment and so on. So grading is pretty straightforward. Please cite your sources. We'll talk a little bit about how we can do that more effectively uh, for folks that might not be feeling great about their citation expertise. I'll look at rough drafts and outlines. Um, try to send them to me as early as possible, ideally a week before the due date. That way I can get good feedback turned around to you. And then the major assignments for the course include a few things. So there is a rough draft of the term paper. So what you're going to look at is a case study, um, an example of conflict that has occurred in the past or is still ongoing. And that conflict should involve the use of communication. So one example, if you take a look at the first chapter, which you do not have to do, um, is um, the infamous Bay of Pinks um, under John F. Kennedy's presidency, and the way that groupthink, um, rather than making good informed decisions, affected that debacle, right? Um, so we'll look at an example of conflict happening in the world, it can be anywhere, right? And um, analyzing that using the content that we've discussed in the course. So as we get closer to that assignment, I'll be posting a rubric and some guidelines to help you out a bit more with this one. If you're anything like me, I know that you might get a lot of test anxiety when it comes to exams. Um, I know that like whenever it's an exam day, it just so happens to be the day that the car breaks down or the bus doesn't run on schedule or whatever. And I don't want you to deal with like the anxiety of coming to class and taking some exams. So the way that I do exams is it's open note, open book. You can take the exam from anywhere on Canvas, right? So um, you can take it at home during the midterm window. Um, this class will be empty during class time, so you can use it. Um, but what you'll do is uh, take the exam. Uh, once you choose to take it, you'll have two hours to complete it. Uh, it's multiple choice and short essay. Uh, most folks finish it in about an hour and a half. But again, I want to create a low stress environment for you. Um, I'm not concerned with you memorizing and regurgitating things. I'm interested in you applying and using the things that we've talked about in the class. There'll also be a study guide as we get closer to that. So here's a fun one. Um, that is the study circle. Uh, so the study circle, as we get a couple weeks into the quarter, uh, and as we'll be talking about later this week, study circle has a group of people, including a facilitator. So you'll be assigned a topic, and there'll be a significant amount of disagreement among group members. And so you all will work together to have you know, a positive um, and respectful discussion surrounding that topic using the skills of conflict management that we've learned for this class, right? Study circles are used all the time in things like marketing, business, education, and so many other fields. So this will be a chance for us to apply and use the skills that we've learned. Attendance and participation. So as I mentioned before, uh, the way that this course works is that um, if you have an event and you're not able to come to class, um, watch the recording and then you'll complete the makeup assignment listed on Canvas. You'll also turn in at the end of the quarter a final draft of your term paper that will just involve uh, applying and using the revisions and feedback that you've received from your first draft. There will be an extra credit opportunity too that will add 20 points or 2% on. Um, I'll introduce that at later into the quarter. These are just the um, writing credits that you'll be able to get for this course. The other thing that I want to show you is the schedule. So I have this posted on Canvas as well, but the course schedule um, essentially is divided up into the day, uh, the topic that we're covering, and then what to do. So reading assignments will be due when you go into class, and then uh, written assignments you'll turn in on Canvas um, by midnight on the day of the visit. By the way, as we're working through any of that stuff, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Raise your hand and interrupt me. All good. 
So that's kind of the overview of uh, the next few weeks. As you'll notice, some of the days we'll have study circles assigned to present. Um, we'll also have um, you know, things such as um, the exam coming up and so on. You'll notice that for Wednesday, I'm asking you to look back through the syllabus if you haven't already. Uh, and I have a short piece from the New York Times that I'm asking you to read. I don't like assigning super long textbook readings you know, at the very beginning of the class. This is just a short piece that's a bunch of student perspectives about the ways that they've encountered conflict and disagreement, especially among families during COVID-19, right? As a lot of students have moved in with their families, um, and a lot of the relationships we've had with family members have changed. So I thought it would be kind of an interesting way for us to integrate um, current events, COVID-19, to um, our discussion of conflict management. The last thing that I want to show you is um, the Canvas page. Again, it sounds like most of you were able to not.com.edu. Um, so it sounds like a lot of you were already able to access Canvas, but I just want to give you a quick refresher of some of the things available for you on Canvas. Go to Courses, go to Conflict Management, COM215, Section 1. So I'm going to show you Student View, or how it should look to you. So again, um, the syllabus is here along with the schedule and the first chapter of the textbook so that you can access it without having your copy yet. Click here and you will get into my Zoom office. Again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. to noon. If you miss a class, click here and the instructions on how to complete the makeup activity will be there. And if you're an athlete, um, you'll be able to do that. I also recommend emailing me once you know the days that you'll be missing class, like you do a game or something, so that I can support you there. You'll also notice as you're working through here that um, I've included links to a lot of the readings and assignments and so on, right? So for Friday, I'm asking you to complete, as I mentioned before, an anonymous uh, intro survey. So it just kind of goes over your writing experience um, and is a space for you to pose any questions or concerns that you have related to the course too. So I definitely recommend as we're working through the quarter, you actively using um, this front page of Canvas and so on to help you in terms of knowing due dates, um, things to work on, and so on. So again, for Wednesday, I'm just asking you to take a look at the syllabus, this short piece about student experiences uh, this past year and a half. And as you're reading this article, you know, take note. What are you noticing about conflict? Uh, what are the conflicts that are being had? What are the disagreements or issues that people are talking about? So, just kind of some food for thought. Um, I know I've received some questions about like what course format will look like. So the US Constitution prohibits cruel and unusual punishment, so I will not be lecturing at you for 50 minutes three times a week. <laughs> we'll be breaking things up. We'll be doing things like we did just now, partner activities, individual prompts. We'll have things like study groups. Um, so you should expect a combination of some lecture things that I feel like are important for me to share, for you to understand sort of material. But, you know, again, we'll be mixing things up with activities and so on. So that's the main thing. Um, also, in an effort to avoid cruel and unusual punishment, I don't think any class should go all the way up to the end on the first day. So we're beating that by like a couple minutes. So um, if you do have any remaining questions or concerns, feel free to ask me or you can get in touch with me. I'll be here for a couple minutes packing up. Otherwise, it is awesome to get to know all of you a little bit better. Please come to class having read that article for Wednesday, along with any questions about the syllabus. Otherwise, I hope that you all are having an awesome first day at EOU uh, for this year. Very different year. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, enjoy being out in the winds, apparently. So, have a good afternoon.